So today we'll learn how to make an adapted toy with an external switch. So there will be a couple items that you'll need. You're going to need a sewing kit, seam ripper, scissors, wire strippers, pliers, electrical tape, scotch tape, a soldering iron, safety glasses, various screwdrivers, and of course solder itself. So the next uh, couple of items you'll need are a cause and effect toy that'll provide you with a simple switch, a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable with both a male and female end, typically found as an extension cable, and a simple tap light. So how to adapt the switch. So first, you're gonna start off with, of course, safety. So you're gonna throw on the safety goggles and then you're gonna get right to the tap light. You're gonna unscrew all of the screws, so all four. They're gonna take a little bit sometimes because they really don't make the holes too big. So you gotta really work around with this and it doesn't take too long. So once you get the screws off, you're gonna take off the, uh, the cover and you're gonna go ahead and kind of inspect it. Check out and see what you're working with. Um, so you wanna keep your screws together. We like to use a little magnet just to keep all the parts together. And you're gonna locate your switch, which is found right here. It's a simple little switch. You're just gonna press it, and that really is going to be our switch that we're gonna be working on. So you're gonna remove um, the little adhesive tape or whatever your switch comes with, and you're gonna go ahead and expose the wires to the best of your ability. Now don't worry about these other components. Uh, we're not gonna be using the light anymore. We're really just going to be focusing on this little button or the switch that uh, we pointed out just a second ago. And here's your switch that I have in hand. And you just wanna make sure you orient it to yourself to make it really easy. Now you're gonna to want to strip the wires and give yourself a, a good amount of exposed wire just so that it's easy to either wrap around or connect with the other strands um, from the cable that we'll be working with in just a second. So once you have the wire set up, you just kind of want to fit it real quick just to check it out. And now we're going to go ahead and strip the other end of the 3.5 millimeter cable. So this is going to be the male end. So this allows us to plug it into pretty much any adapted toy. So you're going to take both ends. We like to secure them with scotch tape or painter's tape. This just makes it really easy to work with so that the wires aren't moving around. Um, and you're going to go ahead and heat up your soldering iron as we prepare. Go ahead and grab some solder. Um, you can be generous with the solder because you'll be using quite a bit of it. Um, you're going to go ahead and snip that off with some pliers. And we're just going to wait a little bit. So now we're going to go ahead and tin our soldering iron. Um, this just ensures that we get a good connection and you're gonna to want to clean off any excess with some steel wool you can easily be found we just use a little can and now you're gonna go ahead and take the solder and place it right above the tip of the soldering iron and contacting the points of both of the wires together you're gonna to ensure that you get a nice and solid connection now the solder does cool off pretty quickly but again just want to be aware be safe with it so the second way that you can solder the two wires together is you're going to go ahead and twist both ends. Twist them to make sure that they're secured with each other. Tape it down once again to secure it. And then you're going to go ahead and lay some solder onto it once again. You can be generous and make sure that it's nice and secure. And again, waiting for it to cool off. Okay. And so just make sure that when you are using the soldering iron, you don't leave it on the wires for too long, just so you're not overheating the cables. Um, so just really keep that in mind while you're doing it. So now we're going to go ahead and seal our connection. So as you can see, we use two different types that I had shown you. You're just going to go ahead and wrap the electrical tape. We prefer to use shrink wrap sometimes just because it's more secure, but electrical tape uh, gets the job done if you need this in a pinch. Go ahead and snip off any excess and just clean it up. Now you should just route your 
cable appropriately through the tap light. There's a nice little portion on the bottom where you can kind of just snake it through. And then you're going to go ahead and route it right underneath this light board or on top, whichever you prefer. And then just make sure it's nice and secure. Um, and also you want to secure down any excess cable just so that you don't have to worry about it moving about. So you're just going to take the rest of the parts. You're going to go ahead and throw that cover back on. You're going to go ahead and reassemble your tap light. Throw in all of your screws. Make sure that they're nice and secure. If you want to adjust the access point of the cable, you can always drill it in on the side. It's just a plastic piece. But otherwise, it's good to go. Okay, so for this next part, we're gonna go ahead and adapt the toy. So here's our little guy from The Lion King. I actually don't really know his name, but we'll be using him just because he's a simple cause and effect toy. You're gonna to wanna to expose the battery pack in the back. Look for the switch and make sure the toy is turned off. When you're working with electronics, you wanna make sure that there isn't any live wires or connections, just, you know, as a safety precaution. Now you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and remove those batteries. Um, it'll just make working with a lot easier. And then we're gonna go ahead and look for the switch. And as you can see right there, and you're gonna go ahead and use that seam ripper to expose the switch. Now this is critical when adapting a toy because this is where you'll be routing the wires to the switch. You're gonna have to fish around a little bit and go ahead and look for those wires. Now typically a simple toy comes with two wires. Um, this one actually came with three just because the switch lights up. So we, we actually had to do a little tinkering and we had to trial and see which cable was connected accordingly. A little bit tricky, but honestly with some trial and error it shouldn't be any problem. So we just went through each wire individually and we just tapped the two together. And we actually are going to have to reinsert the batteries in just a moment. But right now, we're just, since we're not using the switch anymore, we're gonna go ahead and strip the three wires so we can go ahead and do some trial and error. And again, you're just gonna use the wire stripper. You're gonna look for the gauge that's most suitable. You can do some guessing, starting with the largest gauge and then working your way down to a small one until you get a nice and secured strip wire. You're gonna strip these guys off. You're gonna sort them out, throw the batteries back in. Turn it on and then go ahead and test. If you get a noise, then those are the wires that you'll be connecting to. And the third wire, of course, is just used for the light of the switch. So that one can actually be ignored. Now we usually recommend simpler toys, but if you happen to be stuck with a toy with multiple wires, um, then again, it's going to require some troubleshooting. Otherwise, just two wired toys are a lot easier. So once you find your connections, it doesn't necessarily matter which one you connect it to. They're going to complete a circuit either way. You're going to want to go ahead and strip and adjust the wires accordingly so that they're pretty easy to work with and easy to manipulate. You're gonna go ahead and move the toy aside. Just get your workspace ready once again. Secure it down with the painter's tape and then prepare your soldering iron accordingly. So again, you're gonna tin it and you're gonna clean off any excess with a steel wool. And then you're pretty much ready to go again. So secure your wires. So again, this is going to be the female end of the extension cable and that's what we'll be connecting to the toy. You're gonna wrap the two ends together securely and then you're gonna go ahead and heat up the wire a little bit and then put the solder above just to secure that connection together. Now you're gonna go ahead and take the other end. Again we're gonna show you the two ways that we like to do it. You're just gonna twist these ends until they're nice and secured.
once secured again you're going to do the same exact process so you're going to go ahead and solder those two ends heating up the wire first and then dropping the solder onto the wire until you get a nice little coating and these connections are pretty much guaranteed they can definitely withstand a lot more wear and tear Grab some electrical tape and then go ahead and wrap it once again to secure the connection. You definitely don't want to expose the wires because when they come in contact with one another, it will activate the toy. So we're going to want to make sure that they don't come into contact with one another. Again, we like to use shrink wrap, but if you have electrical tape on hand, that is perfectly fine. Now once you have all the wires hooked up, you're going to go ahead and stuff them right back in. You're not going to be using that spare wire anymore. You're going to go ahead and tuck them and make sure it looks nice and clean. To clean up your work you're just going to want to sew up any open areas and then close it off with a nice stitch and you're good to go. And then you're going to throw the batteries right back in. Close it up with a screwdriver, turn it back on, get it back into the toy and then you're just going to test it out with the new switch. So go ahead and plug the female end to the male end and then it should work. And that is how you adapt a toy with an external switch. Thanks for joining us.